Now let's have number four and in this problem um, we have an engineering consulting firm that um, measures its output in standard service R unit. So yung, um, yung binibigay ng consulting firm na to is yung service R. So yun ay function ng personnel grade levels in their professional staff and of course, yung variable variable cost natin is 62 per standard service R. So, uh, we have CV is equal to 62 per R. And um, the charge out rate, so that is the selling price, is 85.56, that is per R, pesos per R. And then, um, the maximum output of the firm so ito yung maximum output so ito lang yung kayang i-provide ng ating firm so meron lang tayong 160,000 hours per year so this is your maximum output again hindi pwede mag-exceed dito yung ating service hours and then yung fixed cost natin so CF is equal to 2,024,000 um, Per year for this firm ang the, the first question is what is the break-even point in standard service hours and in percentage of total capacity so what we need is the break-even point and the break-even point is obtained when the profit is equal to zero so with this um, the profit meaning uh, we have the total revenue minus the total costs and then kung zero to ating profit then therefore our total revenue is equal to the total cost and then, um, if we want to find the total revenue, we know that this one is um, the price times the demand. So, the total revenue is price times the demand. That should be equal to the total cost. So, that is the sum of all the variable costs and then the fixed cost. Okay. So, upon substitution, we can obtain um, 62 times the demand. I'm sorry, not 62, but 85.56. Because that is the selling price. So 85.56 times D. And then this is equated to the variable cost per hour. So that's 62 times D plus um, 2,024,000. So yung mo natin na D, of course, would be in terms of service hours um, per year. Kasi yun yung ating unit um, for, our, ano, for our standard service R. So... In this case, um, the answer will be equal to a few moments later. So that will be 85,000 and then 908.31919 hours. Okay, so I'll be storing this in your calculator, in my calculator pala. And um, remember, this is your break even point. This is the break even point wherein the total revenue will equal to the total cost. Now the next question is what is this percentage in terms of total capacity? So again, yung total capacity natin, our maximum out output is 160,000. So if you want to compute for the percentage of this, so that is percentage, uh, let's just box this. Okay. And then percentage would be equal to 85908.31993 um, divided by 160,000 so this I think is more than 50% so if we divide this answer by 160,000 okay so we are supposed to get the capacity the percentage in reference to the capacity so that is 53.6927 so 6927% okay so stick pa rin tayo sa rules na uh, for decimal places tayo Okay, so in this problem, or for letter A, our answer is this um, 85908, and then in percentage capacity, it is 53 or almost 54%. Okay, so let's have the next one. And what is the percentage reduction in the break even point or sensitivity if fixed costs are reduced? Are reduced if fixed costs are reduced 10%, variable by 10%, and then yung selling price ay ma-increase sa 
Now, itong sensitivity na naka parenthesis um bef- sa ano kasi later on sa finals will be talking about sensitivity analysis and the sensitivity uh ito yung mga changes natin kaya this is called sensitivity dito sa case sa to yung break even kasi usually they are um they are obtained from fixed cost variable cost yung mga changes ng mga yan kaya um in this case we're trying to do some sensitivity analysis na uh, parang initial analysis lang no now um so if fixed costs or cf now if fixed costs are reduced by 10% so magiging ano na lang to 0.90 ng original natin na fixed cost which i think is 0.90 times 2024 and so ito yung magiging ating new fixed cost so i just have to um do it yung ating profit equal to zero so with that we have 85.56 d is equal to 0 0.90 times 2024 okay and then plus the um 62 variable cost times the demand so the new demand will be equal to So the new demand would be seventy-seven uh three one seven point four eight seven two seven. So um, kung mapansin nyo, since mababa na yung ating bagong um demand service hours para magkaroon ng break even. So therefore, as we increase uh, decrease the fixed cost, then uh, mas ke mas konti yung kailangan natin na demand, and which also proves the idea that if the um if the total cost decreases, then of course your demand should be um, decreasing as well I mean you sorry your break-even point should be decreasing as well so if you want to find the sensitivity so percentage reduction natin kukunin so the percent reduction would be um, gawin natin na ano to D prime and then wag D prime let's say D N ito na lang yung N meaning yun yung bagong demand or break-even point so um, D minus D over N D sub N pala divided by D so ito yung ating sensitivity or percentage reduction kasi pag nakuha natin yung ano yung bago nating um, yung difference ng demands na yun divide natin siya dun sa ating original demand then makukuha natin yung ating percentage reduction which is equal to um, kung makapansin nyo matatandaan nyo that's 85,000 um, buti na store ko siya 85,908 point 31919 minus 77317.48727 then divide natin ulit sa 85 um 908.31919 okay then multiply to 100% so your answer should be something like 10% as well Okay, so you should be getting a 10% reduction. Okay. So, yun yung ating magiging uh, percentage reduction sa break-even point. Kapag binawasan natin ng fixed cost ng 10%, 10% din yung maging effect niya sa ating, um, sa ating percentage reduction sa break-even point. Now, how about if we try to reduce the variable cost by 10%? So, kung um 10% naman gagamitin natin if cv um becomes 10% less so we have 0 0.90 times yung cv natin which is actually equal to 62 62 and then so ito yung ating magiging bagong cv which is um kapag kinumpit natin siya per e per every i mean for every um, standard service r we have 55.8 pesos per hour na lang yung ating rate. So with this, um, we have 85.56. Now itong price is not changed. So we have D sub N equal to ngayon sa 2024. Balik natin siya sa original yung fixed cost plus 55.8 DN. Okay. So with this, ang ating new um, break even break even point 
will be equal to six eight zero one zero point seven five two seven okay so ito yung ating um, new break even point now if we want to take the percentage reduction so meron line d minus d n over d and this will give you a value of 20 and so we have a value of 20.83 uh, okay so ito yung ating magiging percentage reduction so 20.833 percentage percent and um kung mapapansin nyo if we change the variable cost in a certain amount 10% lang um kung mapapansin nyo mas malaki na yung effect na dun sa percentage reduction ng ating um break even point kasi uh, sa variable cost kasi di ba usually variable cost depende yan sa demand so if um, in the cases in case where in cases where uh, there are a lot of demands na uh, or in in short uh, marami tayong nabebenta uh, mas mas mo lumalaki yung ating percentage reduction and of course kung bababaan natin yung um, variable cost meaning um, yung cost sa pag-produce ng isang product then uh, in that case mas um, mas di mas baba yung ating need para ma meet yung ating expected break even point okay now if we try to have another one wherein it says here that we try to increase the selling price by 10% so in this case the new selling price would be um 1.1 kasi 10% increase siya, so times 85.56 so in this case uh, let me just compute for the new um, selling price so that would be 94.116 pesos na lang per unit I mean na lang 94.116 units so mas tumaas so we'll be using this uh, profit equal to 0 so 94.116 d sub n that is equal to the fixed cost plus the variable cost so balik ulit tayo dun sa original niyang pricing so yun and then um, if we try to find our uh, new break even point so that is 94.116 so mag ano lang kayo dito mag shift, shift solve kayo kasi ito naman is napaka simple lang na computation so we have 63,021.54689 service hours okay now if you try to compute for the percent reduction same formula lang then d minus d sub n over d this will give you a value of hmm uh, I'll just compute it so this will give you a value that is equal to 26 so times 100 percent though this will give you a value of 26.64 um zero nine percent so yun yung ating magiging sagot for this case 26.6409 percent Again, yung ating basis pa rin dyan is yung ating 85908 na original demand or break-even point. So, in short, um, knowing all of this percentage decrease in terms of break-even point, then as we um, increase the selling price, usually yung amount ng increase ng selling price ay mas malaking effect dun sa ating break-even point. That's the largest effect. That has the largest effect. But of course, if you want to try to reduce the fixed cost and variable cost as well, then may effect din siya. That's why um, um, yung mga procedures na to, this is usually encountered in sensitivity analysis. So, ayun. Yun yung ating gagawin for this problem. And um, I also want to emphasize that um, as we try to solve um, things here, um, make sure na you always look at the case-to-case case -case basis of the problem. Kasi hindi naman sa lang pagkatanong, ito yung tinatanong eh. Minsan, depende yan sa tanong ng problem. Kaya, um, hindi mo minsan kailangan hanapin to Hindi mo minsan kailangan mag-try ng sensitivity analysis just to prove out uh, things here. Depende lang yan talaga sa problem. Now, for the next problem, what we have here is um, a jet-powered commercial passenger carrying airplane. So, let me just read the problem and let's try to analyze what will happen here. The cost of operating a jet-powered commercial passenger-carrying airplane varies as the three halves power of its velocity. Specifically, yung ating um, equation, kung mga nyo, is flashed KNV raised to three halves, 
where n is a trip length in miles, k is a constant of proportionality, and v is the velocity in miles per hour. It is known that at 400 miles per hour, the average cost of operation, operation is um, 300 per mile. The company that owns the aircraft wants to minimize the cost of operation, but that cost must be balanced against the cost of the passenger's time, which has been set at 300,000 per hour. So the first question is, at what velocity should the trip be planned to minimize the total cost? And um, what is the sum of the cost of operating the airplane and the cost of passenger's time? And how do you know that your answer in the problem in part A minimizes the total cost? So, dun muna tayo sa mga given natin. Now, um, yung ating operating cost is given by this equation, KNV raised to 3 halves, wherein yung ating K is yung constant of proportionality, okay? Yung ating N is the length in miles na tinatakbo nung, ano, nung ating aircraft. And then, of course, yung ating V is yung velocity, okay? And then, sabi dito, um, at uh, v is equal to 400 mass per hour. So, yun yung ating velocity. Pero tayong operating cost na equal to 300, um, 300 per mile. So, this is equal to 300 per mile. Okay. And then, um, finally, um, sabi dito, the passenger's cost time is equal to 300,000 per hour. So, in short, um, as the passenger or as the passengers spend um, let's say 2 hours so that will be 2 times 6 2 times 300,000 so yun yung ibig sabihin ng ating passengers time 300,000 yung nagagastos ng lahat-lahat nila per hour okay and then sabi dito the total cost so for A ang sabi dito the total cost is actually equal to the sum of the operating cost or CO natin na CO CO plus um, the Passengers time CC. So, ito yung ating general working equation. Before anything else, um, we need to make sure na yung ating mga values dito ay inconsistent with the total cost. Kasi di ba, ang total cost natin should be in terms of pesos. Pero itong uh, CC natin dito, di ba, per hour sila. So, kailangan natin ng isang multiplier na time for this. Okay? Or whichever is applicable dun sa ating um, certain condition. Pangalawa, yung ating... Um, CO here is in terms of this expression but uh, medyo marami tayong mga unknowns dito so let's try to find a way na ma-reduce yung ating mga unknowns so diba um, given naman na uh, um, at 400 mass per hour meron tayong operating cost of 300 per mile so um, if we do have this so we have 300 miles per hour. So, kung ito ay 300 pesos per mile, so we know very well that N would be equal to 1 in this case. So, this is 300. This is equal to um, K times 1 kasi nga, um, 300 per mile so N would be equal to 1 and then V raised to 3 halves. And by the way, yung V natin is yung ating velocity in mass per hour. So, that is 400 raised to 3 halves which gives you a value of um, 3 over 84k. So, um, actually, hindi dapat equal to it. Dapat um, ganito to. So, this gives you a value of uh, 3 over 80 sa ating um, k, which is your proportionality constant in this um, equation. Okay. Now, um, the next question is, um, paano ba natin ito gagamitin in, in terms of an equation? So, we go back to TC, okay? And then, sa CO, wala na tayong problema dyan kasi um, we already have K, so that is 3 over 80. And then, how about yung ating N? So, yung ating N, um, uh, dito kasi, tinatanong sa atin is total cost, diba? Wala tayong um, particular um, um, idea kung ano ba yung ating length of mile na tinatakbo, diba? So, uh, let's just use N muna dito for now. And then, yung ating V is yung ating A mi minimize kasi, di ba, at what velocity should the trip be planned to minimize the total cost. So, in short, yung ating velocity, ating independent variable dito. So, ito yung ating gagawin natin na independent variable. Okay? So, yun lang naman yun. No? And then, yung ating CC would be um, plus 300,000. Okay? Now, um, the tricky part here is that, uh, di ba, this is in terms of per hour. And we need to make sure that this is in terms of simply pesos. So, um, ano ba yung ating um, 
Ano ba yung parameter na magpapa-change dito in terms of our slang or in R? So, um, if you try to multiply this by the by the velocity or I mean divide this by the velocity, di ba makukuha natin dyan is divided by miles per hour and then makapunta yung R sa ibabaw. So, matitanasan is per mile. So, and then pag minultiply pa natin siya sa N, then this gives us yung ating um, um, length which will turn this into the total cost only or the uh, cost itself. So, if you multiply this by n and then divide this by uh, velocity, so this should give us your, ano, your um, time unit, di ba? Kasi di ba, this is distance and this is velocity. So, alam naman natin sa physics na this is your um, unit for time. Okay. So, um, knowing this and then um, knowing yung ating n, uh, di ba yung ating, ano, yung ating um, length in miles, um, is it a constant or is it not a constant? So, if you'd be thinking of uh, the destination, diba? supposedly, hindi talaga siya constant. But in this case, let's try uh, making it a constant just for this uh, problem. So, if you try to differentiate the total cost with respect to the velocity, okay? So, this will give us the, equa the solution to this problem. So, that would be 3 over 80 uh, and then let's make this n a constant just for now so that is n times 3 halves times v raised to 3 halves minus 1 which becomes 1 half okay so that is our uh, first derivative in this case okay and then how about this 300,000 so this becomes plus 300,000 okay times um, n Okay, and then, um, of course, kung meron tayong V dito, and then we, we need to differentiate it. And this one is uh, V raised to actually negative 1. So, this becomes times V raised to negative 2. And then, of course, we need to change the sign for our positive. So, this becomes negative. Hopefully, nakasunod kayo sa differentiation na yun na ginawa natin. Okay. So, yun. And, um... This is equated to zero. Kung matatan nyo kasi, we're doing optimization here. And ano sa tingin nyo yung pwede natin i-cancel out in this problem? So, we can cancel out n kasi they are just multiplied into 1 kasi in-assume natin na um, constant sila by now. No? So, yun. And then, probably we can now solve for v and you can actually square both sides so that it will be left out with 1 here. Or um, you can raise this to, um, I think the best way is to raise this to um, to both sides. But anyway, so I'll just be using my calculator. So the velocity that I'll be obtaining will be equal to, so the velocity that I have obtained is 490.6813 miles per hour. Okay. And now for B, um, it is asking if how do we, how can we know, or how do you know that your answer in problem in part A minimizes total cost. So again, um, going back to your differential calculus, we know that the second derivative test can determine if your um, critical number is um, a local minimum or a local or a um, local maximum. But uh, there, I mean, there are two ways we can do this by checking on the first. Uh, or the original equation, we can substitute the critical value by using test points. But uh, the easiest way that I can do right here, right now, is of course, yung ating second derivative test na lang. Kasi we can just directly differentiate ito kasi madali lang naman siyang i-differentiate. So I'll be doing that. Okay. And the re restriction natin, second derivative, te derivative test, kung magsi-zero siya, so hindi tayo pwede makapag-decide uh, whether it is um, a local minimum or local maximum. So, if that is the case, then, um, hindi natin siya pwedeng gamitin. Pero, if cases like um, positive naman siya or negative, then we can uh, deduce the, or conclude something from that. So, I think I'll be deleting muna itong mga ibang portions so, at hindi natin kailangan. Meron na tayong K, so, tanda lang natin 3 over 80. So, I think kasha na yun dito, no? For second derivative test, so, um, we have the Okay, so for the second derivative test, we have d squared of the total cost divided by the velocity, okay? 
second derivative. So this becomes um, 3 over 80, of course, times. Um, actually, we can, ano na, we can, um, we can include pa rin yung n kasi hindi naman siya i-set natin sa 0, no? Sige, nasasama ko na lang din siya for now, pero, um, i-set pa siya as a constant, okay? So, mm -hmm. So, we have n times 3 halves and then times 1 half, okay? And then, um, v raised to, um, negative 1 half na ito, in this case, okay? Then minus 300,000, okay? And then, we multiply this by n times negative 2, and then v raised to negative 3. Okay, so ito na yung magiging, ano na niya, the, uh, second derivative. And if you try to rewrite this, okay? So, um, we have 9, so simplify na lang natin, simplify ko na lang siya. 9 over 320 and v raised to negative 1 half minus 300,000 n so this becomes positive I think positive 600,000 na to kasi ano eh, times negative 2 pa siya dun. so this becomes positive 600,000 and v raised to negative 3 okay where of course yung ating um, yung ating uh, v natin dito is equal to the critical number na 490.6813 miles per hour. Now, upon substitution dito, makukuha natin sagot is in terms of n. Kasi nga, um, hindi kasi na-specify dito kung anong, ano, eh, kung anong n natin dito. Mas maganda sana kung sinabi niya na 1 mile yung ating tatakbo para, ana, para mas gets natin. No? Pero, um, actually, we can, ano naman, we can deduce dun sa ating ginawa kanina na since 300 per mile siya, so yung n natin is 1. Pwede natin siyang gamitin na ating consideration, pero um, di pa rin siya sobrang enough para masabi na yung n talaga natin will not change. It's, ano, it's yung ating final output to sa ating costs. Pero since uh, we lack the information, so let's just uh, assume na 1 pa rin yung ating n just to deduce the final output in this case. So with this, um, gawin natin na lang tong 1, okay? para hindi na siya masyadong maka-affect sa ating equation kasi meron lang tayong V. Hindi tayo pwede mag-deduce ng final answer to this pag hindi natin siya sinet as constant as 1. Okay. So, if you try to do this, uh, d squared dc divided by dv squared will give us um, a value of our second derivative. No? And um, if you try to find the second derivative using this equation, meron na naman tayong value ng V. So, Kung mapapansin nyo, kita nyo na agad dyan na yung ating maging sagot is positive, di ba? Kasi, um, wala naman tayong, ma ano, wala naman tayong subtraction sign dyan. And of course, yung ating exponent naman lahat is, um, kahit pa negative or positive, um, ano lang yan. Magkakaroon lang tayo ng positive value dyan. So, we have 6.348. Four times 10 to the negative 3. So this is a positive value. So knowing that this is a positive value for letter B, we can say therefore that um, our critical number or the answer for 90.6813 mass per hour is a minimum because yun nga, yung based on the second derivative test, yung ating slope dun sa second derivative test na yun is um, decreasing. That's why it is a um, minimum. Okay? I mean, increasing, that's why it's a minimum. So, basta, um, trick lang doon pag second derivative test. Kung natatandaan nyo, pag siya ay positive, minima siya. Pag siya ay negative, then siya ay maximum. So, di ba, ganun yun. Okay, so, yun. So, I think ito yung ating maging answer. And then, uh, siguro, ito na lang yung ating pangalawa just to give or imply yung ating um, answer na ito yung ating ginawa just to find that it is the the velocity that minimizes the total cost. Okay. But yun nga, uh, sinasabi ko is, hindi pa rin sobrang complete ng problem na to kasi it, it should have been um, merong expression din for n or meron tayong certain value for n na pwede natin consider in this case. Kasi, um, what if uh, we try to have um, although yun nga, kahit naman anong value dito ng n 
as you can see kahit ano pang value niya positive pa rin makukuha rin so okay lang din pala na hindi nila in-specify kasi kung mapansin nyo if you go back to this second derivative yung n dito kasi hindi naman siya nagmamatter kahit pa anong value niyan so maging ano lang din yan positive pa rin makukuha natin sagot in this case so okay lang pala yan dito kasi siya may effect eh dito sa first derivative kasi may minus tayo dito pero um, since we're just finding the critical number here pwede natin siya makansal out kasi isaset natin yun equal to 0 okay so, yun for our number 5. Okay, so itong ating next problem, medyo mahaba siya, no? And, um, baka lalo hindi magkasya ating mga solution dito, pero um, hindi ko kasi pwedeng tanggalin yung ating problem. So, um, pagkakasya natin sa malit na space. So, basahin ko muna yung problem and hopefully mas magets nyo siya pag binasa ko, no? So, in general, the heat loss through the roof of a single story home is Q is equal to UA delta T. So, I think, uh, na-encounter nyo itong ganong problem. Hopefully, na-encounter nyo ito sa thermodynamics or sa momentum. Pero, usually, sa heat transfer to na-encounter. Eh. Pero anyway, so, ito yung equation for heat. That is the, uh, just to give you an idea, yung U natin is the overall transfer, heat transfer coefficient. Area is yung, yung A is yung area and then delta T is yung ating temperature gradient. So anyway, yun yung ating Q. And then, sabi dito, in the Philippines, the number of heating days per year is approximately 230. So in short, dun sa 230 days na yun, meron tayong araw or mainit, ganon. And annual heating degree days equal to 230, which is actually 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 46 degrees Fahrenheit. So, this is equal to, ah, maya. Actually, yung degree days, so yung degree days ay 230, tapos yung degree, yung days ay 230, yung degrees ay 65 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Which is equal to 4370 degree days per year. So, ito parang ano na, parang binigyan na tayo ng average value of your uh, degree days per year. Okay. So, um, di nyo na kailangan siyang ano, um, hanapin pa, no? So, actually, ito kasi yung, ano, ito yung 4370. Supposedly, ito yung parang 65 minus 46 times 230. So, if you try to compute for that, um, yung kasing uh, 65 minus 46, yun na yung ating tinatawag na delta T dun sa original equation natin, no? And then, 230 is, ito yung ating UA. Yung UA na yan. Kaya, meron tayong 4360. <coughs> Okay, so sabi dito yung 65 degrees Fahrenheit, yun yung higher um, threshold ng temperature. It is assumed to be the average inside temperature and 46 degrees Fahrenheit is the average outside temperature each day. So in short, mas, mali, mas mainit lagi sa loob kasi ganun naman talaga, mas mainit lagi sa loob ng bahay. Eh. Kasi mas, ano eh, mas masikip, mas marami, mas may tao sa loob. Kaya yung na-expel natin na heat, especially sa body, nag-contribute yun sa ating um, pag-init sa loob ng bahay. So, consider a 2,400 cubic, sorry, consider a 2,400 feet squared single-story house in Batangas. So, the typical annual space heating load for the size of a house is 100 times 10 to the 6 British thermal unit. So, ito yung ating typical annual, uh, typical annual space heating load. So, in short, ito lang yung parang pwede natin ay provide or um, kung hindi man i-provide, yung pwede natin tanggalin, if ever. Okay. So, that is, with no insulation, so, in short, pag daw ang bahay ay walang insulation, yung at, sa attic, about 100 times 10 to the 6 British thermal unit per year is lost. So, in short, kapag daw yung bahay mo is walang insulation, yung nalolost na heat noon is 100 times 10 to the 6. Okay. So, alam naman natin na yung insulator, ba? They usually impede. impede. So, alam naman natin na yung insulator, ba? They usually add resistance to the heat. Kaya, um, kapag wala nun, eh, di mas madaling mag-travel yung ating heat. Pero pag meron, di syempre, hindi agad yung basta-basta mag-dissipate. Now, the value of energy savings that results from adding insulation and reducing heat loss is dependent on what type of residential heating furnace is installed. So, in short, depende sa ating furnace na ilalagay yung ating magiging um, reduction for heat loss. And also, several insulation alternatives and associate, 
and associated space heating loads for this house are given in the following table. So yung R value indicates the resistance of heat transfer. The higher the number, the less the heat transfer. So in short, sinabi lang doon na if we have a resistance na mataas, then yung ating um, heat transfer would be less. So parang inversely proportional sila. Okay, so ito yung ating table. So kita nyo naman dyan yung table. So basahin ko lang yung mga parameters natin. Mala investment cost for each uh, insulation. And then we have annual heating load na um, British thermal unit per year. Now, yung amount of insulation for R11, 600, okay? For investment cost lang, and then 74 times 26 yung kaya niyang i- um, yung kaya niyang i-offer for this resistance, no? So, okay, ito dyan, from R11 to R38. So, 600, 900, 1316, and then yung size 74, 6, 9.8, 7.2, 6.2. So, po ba sila? Kaya nga, um, as the resistance kind of increases, yung ating annual heating load decreases. Parang, yun yung, ano, yun yung effect ng ating pagkaba resistance. At syempre, kung mataas yung resistance natin, expect natin na mas mahal yun. Kaya mas mataas yung investment cost nun. Now, take the cost of electricity as um, 74, actually 0 0.074 per kilowatt hour. So in short, yung 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 3,413 British thermal unit. And ano ba yung amount of attic insulation is most economical? And then, the life of the insulation is estimated to be 25 years. So itong lahat ng insulation na to is 25 years. Ang pinakatanong lang is, which amount of attic insulation is most economical? In short, una natin kailangan hanapin dito is yung most economical na insulation. So, ano ba yung ating magiging basis dito since um, wala naman tayo dito mga revenue, di ba? Wala naman profit. So, di ba sabi natin sa rule 2, kapag wala tayong mga profit or yung mga um, revenue natin, so we will try to um, compare the costs ng um, production or cost ng pagkagawa ng, ng gantong equipment or rule number 2. So, in short, hahanapin natin kung sino ba yung may pinakamalaki dito total cost. Okay. So, how do we set up this equation? First things first, um, so, we will be considering the total costs in this case. Now, total cost for R11, R19, R30, R38. Now, itong investment cost, diba, 600 siya. So, fix na yan kasi fix, ano siya eh, investment cost siya. So, parang one time, big time dun to kasi investment siya. Now, um, paano ba natin kukumbitin yung, ano, yung other costs nila, yung variable costs, knowing na ito is, um, meron tayong utility na ginagamit dito, eh, di ba? Okay, so, pasensya na ako, nagbabago-bago ako ng symbol na ginagamit, no, kasi sana ako dun sa isang, dun sa isang notation, eh. Actually, dapat ganito, eh, CT is equal to CF plus CV, dapat, hindi, hindi baliktad na letter, pero, um, never mind, guess nyo naman din yun kahit mabaliktan yung letter na So, um, unahin natin yung CF ng bawat isa Diba, 600, 900, 1316 So, okay tayo doon Pero this annual heating load is British thermal unit per year So, kung halimbawa, meron tayong British thermal unit per year And meron tayong estimated na 25 years So, we can convert this in terms of um, British thermal unit By multiplying this to the number of years of es estimated insulation Okay so, in short, um, so gawin natin siya sa total cost ng R11, no? So, fixed cost niya ay 600. So, yan na yun. And then, we add the variable cost. So, annual heating load niya is 74 times 10 to the 6. And for now, I'll be using the units para makita niyo yung cancellation na nangyayari. So, diba, sabi dito, um, we have 25 years of um, estimated life of insulation. So, we have 25 years. Okay? So, we can cancel out and then we're left out with the total amount of uh, heat na pwede nilang i-load or pwede nilang i-resist if ever. So, uh, we multiply this with the conversion factor of 4, 4 kilowatt hour. So, that is uh, 3,413 British thermal unit. This is equivalent to 1 kilowatt hour. Okay? And then, yung isang kilowatt hour, magkano ba yung cost niya? Kasi, di ba, if we're talking about the total costs here, so we need to convert this in terms of um, peso lahat. So in this case, we have 0 0.074 pesos. Okay, So we can cancel things out here, and then we're left out with pesos. So CTR11, um, sana mag-compute din kayo para ma-check nyo kung tama ba yung pinagagawa ko dito. So, I mean, 
Syempre, importante yung ano eh, yung double check nyo kasi sometimes di ko napapansin, may mali pala ako napipindot sa calculator. And maganda yung marami nagsasolve. Okay. So, based on this solution, based on my solution, I was able to obtain 40,711.339 na total cost for R11. So, that is uh, my um, computation in this case. Now, um, so, uh, so, itong, ano, itong, um, itong cost na to, ito yung based on the fixed cost and the variable cost. So, siguro, I can just write it somewhere here para alam natin. So, for R11, meron tayong 40, 711.339. Okay, so, burahin ko na muna itong iba dito. Oops. Burahin ko na lang yung portion na, ano, na nababago dito, di ba? So, ito na lang. Tsaka ito. Tsaka ito. Okay. So, how about for CT nung ating R19? And by the way, baka nagtataka kayo, para saan po kaya itong unang mga sentences na ito, no? Parang wala naman siyang kinalaman dito sa pangalawa, no? Actually, ito kasi yung unang sentence na ito. Um, itong mga sentences na ito, kung mapapansin nyo, itong mga 74 times 10 to the 6, 69.8 times 10 to the 6, this is computed based dun sa equation na ito. Sa taas. Okay. And binigay na siya sa atin supposedly. Binigay na siya sa atin. Okay, so now let's proceed with uh, CTR19. So again, um, so itong mga to is uh, yung first uh, uh, <laughs> na yung first uh, paragraph or uh, paragraph. Na yung, first par yung, na yung first paragraph here it just talks about yung ating ano yung ating current setting na pag wala tayong insulation ito yung nalolos ng ating um ito yung nalolos sa ating uh, housing so that's why we need to add insulation para ma-reduce siya kasi ba 100 times to the 6 nagiging 74 na lang 66.2 so basically um, wala naman siyang meaning dito ang uh, kailangan nating hanapin is yung total cost for each and by the way um since yung uh, this one is ano eh insulation siya estimated uh, for 25 years so in short um parang life cycle cost na tong ating kinokompute dito kasi buong ano na to eh buong ano na buong buong year na na pwede siyang gamitin kasi in cases na uh, hindi 25 years ang ating ginamit let's say annual cost lang then that would be a different story for this kasi um Kasi yun nga, parang multiplier lang natin is depende kung gano'n siya katatagal. Pero in this case, lahat sila 25. So, we'll be using that in as a reference na lang for the life cycle. Anyway, so we go back to the solution. So, we have here 900. Okay? Uh, should be 900 plus. Okay, so 900 plus 69.8 times 10 to the 6. So, that is 69.8 times 10 to the 6. Okay? So, 25 years, 3413.074. And the answer for CT R19 is... So, for CT R19, we have 38, 734. Point, uh, let's just use 7, uh, 50. Okay. So, for our CTR30, we have 1,300, okay, plus 67.2 times 10 to the 6, and then, ito, yan. Question na yan, no? Same procedure lang din, um, convert lang natin yung bagong heating load. So hopefully you're able to get the same answer. So I'll be I was able to get three seven seven two five point four three two. Okay, so you natin for R thirty. And then for R thirty eight naman we have one thousand six hundred plus ito sixty six point two times ten to the sixth and then lahat ng conversion factor na to. So sixty six point two times ten to the sixth 
75 divided by 3413 times 0 0.074 and then you have to add 1600 as the investment cost so you have 374 83.3871 right so yun ang ating mga final total cost or life cycle cost and hopefully nagtry kayong mag ano, magsagot and hopefully nagtry din kayong mag-guess bago tayo mag-start kung alin ba dito yung best natin na uh, option for the insulation but as you can see clearly by rule number 2, we can say na ang ating least cost here, our total cost, our life cycle cost is this R38. So we should be picking this kind of insulation. Kaya in short, uh, which amount of attic insulation is most economical? So that is R38. Actually, if your question is which amount, kung ano man yung amount ng R38 na yun, then yun yung ating gagamitin. No? It's just that yung basis naman natin is investment cost which I think um, considered na dyan yung certain amount. And hopefully naman, kasi pag inisip mo yung amount, same lang yan eh. Kasi same lang naman yung bahay. Kung ano yung ginamit mo sa R11, supposedly hindi yung gagamit mo sa R38 kasi almost same lang naman yan. Insulation lang yan eh. Material ay nakakaiba dyan. So in that case, yung amount is, not really the question but uh, what type of insulation will be using. So that's R38. So, yun for number 6. And let's proceed to the next problem. Okay, for this problem naman, so let me just read the problem first. And uh, I would just want to clarify na um, kulang yung tanong dyan. Kasi, Aww. actually, hindi tanong, but yung um, given. Kasi, it should have this uh, last sentence here. The machine attendant is paid $15 per hour. Kasi, kailangan natin ng variable cost eh. Uh, or other fixed cost. So, um, yung variable overhead costs for the turret lathe are estimated to be $10 per hour. So, paki-add na lang yun sa inyong handout. So, um, let me just read the problem first. So, a certain part has an annual demand of, actually, of yun, of 100,000 units. The part is produced on a high-speed turret lathe using 112 screw machine steel costing 0.30 per pound. Um, so, uh, ganito yung ano, setting. So, meron kang certain turret lathe. So, ito yung parang machine na uh, parang pinaiikot-ikot natin para magawa yung certain part of the certain machine. So, ganun siya. And then, sabi, yung, yung 112 screw machine, ang cost is 0.30 per pound. Now, so, na, dahil nga um, gusto nilang makatipid, hopefully, so, nag-conduct sila ng study. So, study was conducted to determine whether it might be cheaper to use brass screw stock. So, ibig sabihin nun, yung stock na gagamitin natin is instead of steel, papalta natin siya ng brass. Okay? So, it costs mas mahal 1.40 per pound. Because the weight of steel required per piece is was 0 0.0353 pounds and that the brass was 0 0.0384 pounds. The material cost per piece was 0 0.0106 for steel and 0 0.0538 for brass. Okay. However, when the manufacturer engineering department was consulted, it was found out that almost that although 57.1 defect free parts per hour were being produced by using steel, the output would be 102.9. So almost ano to, parang less than almost double. So defect free parts per hour if brass were, were used. Which material should be used for this part? Now, uh, I would just like to clarify this uh, de defect free parts na sinasabi natin, no? So when we say defect free um, it is the average ano, it is the average amount na pinaproduce ng ating material in a way na hindi ka magkakaroon ng defect. For example, di ba hindi naman lagi perfect yung ating mga machines. So, sometimes they produce uh, a substandard product. And um, dun sa run na yun, for example, marami tayong pinaproduce na let's say ball pen. Merong um, 100 ball pen dyan na pag in-inspect mo lahat, okay sila lahat. Pero yung pang 101 natin, may defect siya. So, ito yung sinasabi natin na defect-free parts. Uh, Makakapag-produce tayo ng 57.1 defect-free parts per hour dun sa una. Pero sa pangalawa, 102.9 yung defect-free niya. So, in short, less defect itong 102.9 defect-free. Okay, so, uh, yung machine attendant na syempre, usually pag ating sa mechanism mga equipment natin, meron tayong tao na nag attend dun sa equipment na yun. So, $15 per hour yung kanyang salary and then yung variable cost, syempre kasama dun yung operation sa turret lathe at yung mga maintenance niya. So, it is $10 per hour. So, dun sa operation, buong operation natin. So, um, ano ba yung ating pipiliin dito na material? Would we replace or would we stick with the original uh, screw, steel screw? 
Okay, so the best way to deal with this is to tabulate muna yung ating mga ano, mga uh, mga factors, no? So, if you have a steel here, ito yung ating original steel. And then, meron din tayong brass dito. So, sabi dito, if we have, um, yung steel costing is 0.30 per pound. So, we have um, 0.30 dollars per pound. Okay. And then, sabi dito, um, yung isang steel, yung isang, ano, yung isang, um, one of those screws, machine steel, meron dito na sinabi na, saan ba yun? The weight of steel required per piece is 0 0.0353. So, in short, we can multiply this um, 0 0.0353 pound para makukuha tayo ng initial costing per piece. So, with this, uh, if we multiply this to our um, so costing natin, so this will give you yung ating 0 0.01059 uh, dollars per piece. Kaya, kung mapapansin nyo, ito yung ito yung value dito sa 0 0.0106. So, yun actually yung ano, yung yung meaning nun. Okay. So, with that, I'll just be using ito na lang at saka ito kasi ito rin yung reason kung bakit nagkaroon tayo ng 0 0.0538. Minultiply natin yung cost ng brass which is 1.42.0384. So, ito na lang ang gagamitin kong dalawa kasi yun naman yung mas importante dito. Kasi una sa lahat, kulang tayo ng space. <laughs> so, um, we have 0 0.0106. And you can check that para ma, ano, para masigurado nyo kung baka naglolo lang ako dito. No? So, yung brass, we have ito. So, we have 0 0.0538 per piece. Okay. Now, since we're talking about um, the cost per piece, no? And then, sabi dito, um, meron tayong uh, so, ito, usually, ito yung variable cost natin, di ba? Kasama sa variable cost. Pero huwag natin labelan muna. So, ito yung ating cost per piece. And then, um, we have $15 per hour sa machine attendant. Pero since we're considering per piece here, di ba? Per piece yung ating kinoconsider ngayon, hintay per hour. So, ang gagawin natin ngayon, since meron kang $15 ngayon na uh, per hour, and we're considering yung ating money in terms of per piece so gawin natin is convert natin yung salary niya in terms of pieces na, na, ano, na nagagawa niya sa pieces ng steel di ba meron 57.1 defect free parts per hour na produce and then 15 per hour and then 15 dollars yung saldo mo dun. so if I will be dividing this by the defect free parts then uh, ito yung estimate ng salary mo per piece na defect free di ba and then for your estimated uh variable cost here we have ten dollars per hour so that is also 10 divided by 57.1 so i hope this makes sense because this is just converting our variable in the same um, units per piece now you can now convert this naman din in terms of um per hour pero syempre you have to consider yung ating defect free parts na napoproduce in that case okay so we have here also 50 naman pero in this case we'll be using um, uh, 102.9 defect free, and then this one is also 10 over 102.9. Okay, so we add these two. Okay, so pag na add natin yun, mga compute na natin yung better option here kasi mga compare natin sila eh, per piece kung ano ba yung ano ba yung cost ng production natin per piece. So in this case, for the steel, yung total cost natin of production for the steel would be equal to. 0 0.44 so 0 0.4484 dollars per piece now how about this brass so let's try having this brass so 0 0.538 and then uh, 102.9 lang yung ating mga defect free so in short yung total cost natin for brass this is equal to 0 0.2968 dollars dollar actually more than one is many daw kasi para pag decimal point hindi, hindi pa yun paso so um correct me if I'm wrong hindi ko alam pag English pag ganun so yung ating um brass is 0.2968 dollar per piece okay and then 0.4484 dollar per steel per piece nun 
So, which material should be used for this part? So, the answer should be brass. Kasi, kitang-kita naman na mas mababa siya. Diba sabi natin, kung wala tayong revenue, kung wala tayong um, profit, then we consider rule number 2, which is all about the total cost of production of the certain product. And then, I think meron pang follow-up question dito. Actually, wala nang follow-up question. Advance ako mag -isip. So, yun na yun. Yun na yung ating, ano, yun na yung ating magiging, um, answer. Now, um, kung halimbawa, nakaroon dito ng selling price, pero I will assume na yung ating selling price dito, same lang din yan eh. Pero if ever na uh, may selling price dito, then we will be considering yung demand times the selling price minus yung cost of production times the demand itself. Then, doon pa natin madedecide kung alin ba talaga yung ating mas, uh, yung better option and it's not rule number 2 anymore, but rule number 1, which will include the profit or the um, total revenue in this case. Okay? So, hopefully, nag-guess nyo itong problem na ito. No? Ito, yung, uh, ito yung answer natin because yung ating brass is um, greater than steel. I mean, better. Ito yung better, ha? Better. I know I can treat you. Better. Okay, so... Yon, ang bromine is ano eh, is greater than strong ano ba? Gumana yung strong. Anyway. So, kayo mas may alam uh, mas alam niyo yung ano, periodic table. This is the periodic table, no gas is stable. Halogens and alkali react aggressively. Each period will see new outer shells of electrons are added moving to the right. Ano ba bang ST? Meron bang ST? Anyway, so <laughs> let's proceed with the ano, with the next item. Okay, so for our next problem, meron na ulit tayong dalawang machine. Kung para to, to pero oba yung lagi. Pili ka lang sa dalawa pag mali isa din. So anyway, so um for number 8, uh, let me just read the problem first. Ito wala na tong ano. Um I think wala man dito ang i-edit. So, two currently owned machines are being considered for the production of a part. Talagang ano eh. Production of a part. The capital investment associated with the machine is about the same and can be ignored. So, in short, meron tayong investment. Pero, di ba, when we try to compare the profit, we just have to add this fixed cost as the capital investment. And then, kung pareha sila, di ba, magka-cancel out lang yun. Kasi, syempre, pares lang sila. So, you don't have to consider that capital investment. So, kaya ganito ginawa dito. Inignore na lang yung ating capital investment. Pwede, pero, pwede naman natin siyang ilagay kung nandun din sa problem, no? Pero, it won't affect the solution as well. So, the machines differ in their production capacities. So, yun nga. Yung production rate times available production hours and their reject rates. So, ito, kanina kasi meron tayong defect-free parts, di ba? So, ngayon naman, itong reject rate, yun yung binigay sa atin instead of defect-free. Kasi, di ba, kung meron kang seven kung meron kang 10% parts rejected, alam natin na 90% doon yung defect-free. So, yun yung kinukasi natin kanina, no? So, consider the following table. So, kita nyo yung table dyan, and I will just explain some parts here. So, yung parameters natin would be the production rate, hours available for production, and then percents, percent parts rejected. Now, for machine A, we have 100 parts per hour. So, in short, sa loob ng isang oras, nakapag-produce na ng 100 parts. Pero, mag-combine na doon yung ating uh, defect, may defect at saka wala. Okay? And then, sa available for production natin na oras is 7 hours a day. So, 7 hours tayo nagraran. Ang ano lang naman ito. Ang konti lang. So, meron tayong percent parts reject na 3%. So, in short, sa 100 parts, kung uh, i-take natin in consider itong parts rejected, so, 97 dyan is defect free and then yung tatlo dyan would be um, rejected. Now for machine B, we have 130 parts per hour and then 6 hours per day and then 10%. Now the material cost is $6 per part and all defect free parts produced can be sold for $12 each. So itong material cost, pare sila for both it's just that um, variable cost ito na kinoconsider natin na pag nagpo-produce tayo, kailan pa natin gumastos, ba? Ngayon, yung rejected parts, rejected parts have negligible scrap value. So, ang ibig sabihin lang nito, di ba minsan yung mga rejected natin, may kumukuha pa yung companies kasi they will be utilizing that for their, um, another pro for their other product. And sometimes, we use this just to, 
um, produce another byproduct kung gusto natin. Pero in cases like this, sabi nga dito, yung ating rejected part, wa- wala siyang negligible, wala siyang scrap value. So in short, di mo siya pwedeng ipagbenta kasi wala, walang kumukuha eh. So ganun siya. And then for either machines, the operator cost, for either machine, the operator cost is 15 dollars per hour. Now, for either machine, the operator <laughs> Now, for either machine, the operator cost is 15 per hour and the variable overhead rate is traceable for traceable costs is $5 per hour. Now, um, the question is, assume that the daily demand for this part is large enough that all defect free parts can be sold, which machine should be selected? Now, in this case, if we're able to find the defect free parts, we'll try to sell them. Kasi may price naman tayo eh. And then, uh, the second question is, what would the percentage of parts rejected have to be for machine B to be as profitable as machine A? Actually, yung, yung B, nagbigay na siya ng hint kung ano ba yung pipili natin. Kasi syempre, tatanong mo ba kung, kung paano mo maging profitable yung B kung hindi siya yung, ano, hindi siya yung answer, diba? <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so, but let's just solve it anyway. So, let's start with um, general equation natin. Sabi dito, yung daily demand is large enough. So, wala tayong problema sa demand. No? Kasi mabebenta lahat yon. Pero, ano ba yung ating consider dito? Since meron tayong ano dito, pricing na 12 uh, pesos each. So, we'll try to sell them. Kaya magkakaroon tayo ng revenue. And, syempre, may cost of production tayo. So, in short, profit yung ating consider dito. No? Profit. Sino ba yung may pinakamalaking profit dito? So, for, for profit A, nung, yung machine A, di ba? We have the total cost of A minus the balik to the So for the profit of A, we have the total revenue for A minus the total cost of production for A. Okay. And then yung total revenue of A, so um ano ba yung amount na mabenta dito? So um ihu 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 to. Okay. Unahin ko tong um total cost for A. So, di ba, yung CTA natin, this is a combination of the fixed cost plus the variable cost. And this gives us, yung fixed cost natin dito is yung bytes operator, which is $15 per hour. So, this gives us um, $15 per hour. And then, sabi daw dito, we have 7 hours a day. Di ba, daily naman yung kanakasin natin demand. So, daily lang atin. May one day lang tayong consider. So, if we have one day, then meron tayong 7 hours na um, payment. I mean, 7 hours na production time, production hours. So, 15 times 7 would be yung bayad natin for this machine operator. Na syempre, meron tayong variable overhead rate na traceable cost of $5 per hour yun. So, babayaran din natin yun yung ating um, overhead rate. So, we have $5 times 7. Okay. And then, sabi dito, um, meron naman tayong material cost na $6 per part. So, if we have $6 per part, we need to find the number of parts na pinaproduce natin per day. So, if you have $6 um, per part, and then meron tayong 100 parts per hour, and then sabi dito, we have 7 hours per day. So, ito yun, 6 times 100 times 7. 100 times 7, meaning sa loob ng 7 hours, meron kang pinaproduce 700 parts, and then um, 6 pesos, the, 6 pesos, $6 dan yung material cost. Okay. So, in short, yung ating total cost for A would be um, equal to so let me just compute muna no? so ito yung ating um, total cost for a 4340 let me store this para future use okay now how about our ano, our um, total revenue no? so alam naman natin na yung revenue is mga galing siya dun sa defect free na mababenta so, kung halimbawa, nagpaproduce tayo ng 100 uh, parts per hour and then um, meron tayong 7 hours a day, so we should have 700 parts na napaproduce. Which, in turn, kung meron tayong 700 parts na napaproduce and then uh, 3% doon ay reject, so most probably, yung 97% doon would be defect-free. And then, we need to sell that, so that would be times 12. Kasi ang per unit, meron tayong 12 peso selling part. 12 dollar selling part. So, so in short, uh, this TRA, so this TRA would be equal to 100 times 7 times 0.97 times 12. 
So this gives you 8148. So this is 8148 dollars. Mamayna sa nagatina 4340, which gives us the profit of A that is equal to um, 3808. Okay. So daily, meron tayo a profit for A na 3808. So we just have to add it here. Para hindi natin siya makalimutan. So, CTA ay 4340. Yung ating TRA is equal to 8148. And yung profit natin for A is the difference. So, that is 3808. Okay. So, now we can delete this. And we'll just have to apply the same concept for our um, problem. So, I think ito na lang yung buburahin ko. Yung mga um, unnecessary ano dito. Para hindi tayo masyado magpura ng ano, sobrang dami. Okay, so hopefully nakakasunod pa rin kayo kahit medyo mabilis-bilis tayo ng kaunti. Okay, so um, this one is still 15 times 7 kasi same lang yung ating uh, machine. For machine B na tayo ha, machine B tayo. B, B. B, 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 B. Okay. So, for machine B, uh, 15 uh, dollars din yung ating bayad sa ating taga-operate ng machine. Pero, we're working, for this machine, we're just working for 6 hours. So, we have 6 here. And then, syempre, 6 din dito, no? 5 din siya yung overhead cost. And then, of course, kung meron tayong 6, um, saan ba yun? Yung ating 6 pesos na pinaproduce material cost, same lang din naman siya. Pero meron tayong instead of 100 parts per day and then 7 hours, we ha we do have 130 parts per hour and then meron tayong 6 hours uh, per day. So this gives you your new um, cost for machine B which is, um, so technically iisipin ko mas mababa to dapat sa ano. I mean yung ating profit mas mababa kesa sa ano, kesa sa letter A kasi sabi dito mas profitable daw yun supposedly so yun yung next question eh. anyway so um, that is your cost for B and now uh, let's try to find the total revenue for B so in this case uh, ito magiging 130 kasi yun yung ating pinaproduce okay and then of course 6 hours lang okay so 6 hours and then, uh, yung defect free natin is instead of using 0.97, we have 0.90 kasi 10% um, yung, eh, yung ating rejects here. Pero syempre, selling price 12 pa rin. So, for our profit, um, this 130 times 6 times 0.9 times 12 is equal to 8424. And then, if you subtract 4,800 from that, then we'll be able to get our PB. So, our PB is equal to... 3624. Ah, uh, that's why. Okay. So, makes sense. So, f oops. So, for our um, total cost of B, we have 4,800. For the total revenue of B, we have 8424. And then, of course, the profit natin for B would be 3624. And therefore, uh, since yun nga, mas mas ano eh, mas profitable yung ating A based on rule 1 we, we should be selecting yung ating um, machine A sa case na to based on rule 1 yan no okay malilito baka piliin nyo tong uh, B kasi mas mababa so profit yan so dapat mas mataas yun okay so uh, and finally um, what would the percentage of parts rejected have to be for machine B to be as profit B B B B B as machine A. Now, in this case, since we need to consider comparing the profit of A to B, so we need to equate this profit ng B sa A, di ba? So, in short, um, kung equate natin yung profit A dun sa supposedly ay total revenue nung B minus total cost, total cost nung B, so this should be our new equation. Bakit siya A? Kasi sabi, kailangan daw maging as profitable as machine A. So, we'll be using this profit ng A. Okay. So, this is now equal to 3,808. Just to give, uh, para ibigay ang hilig ng letter B na to. <laughs> so, anyway. 
we substitute the values here now. So, alam naman natin na yung ating total revenue, again, will be coming from 130 parts na pinaproduce natin for 6 hours na defect free. So, that is 0.90. Pero, yun yung ating ano dito, yung reasoning dito na uh, 12 pesos, 12 dollars per, ano, per piece. So, yung ating ahanapin dito is X kasi ito yung mababago sa atin ngayon, yung defect free. Ilang percentage ba para maging 3,808? 3, Pero yung ating total cost of um, B would still be the same kasi imagine, um, ang factor lang naman dito is yung 15 natin. Diba 15, um, 15 dollars per hour ng operating cost which is wala naman tayong, ano, naman tayong, um, Multiplier dito is ano lang, yung hours a day lang. As well as yung ating overhead cost. So, yun yung ating variable cost. As well as this one. Sa material cost kasi, um, kahit pa meron tayong certain number of reject, ang pinaproduce pa natin ng material is 130. So, wala tayong ano, need na i-consider doon for our computation. And then, as well as yung ating, um, um, yun. So, yung hanggang doon lang. And then, so, we subtract yung ating CTB which is 4,800 and this is equal to 3,808. So, hopefully, you'll be able to get the value of X. So, in this case, um, I'll just be using my calculator para compute yung atin na, na X. So, our X is 0 0.9197. So, this means that um, ito yung ating defect free percentage, diba? And, um, kung rejected na ating inahanap, so we need to find 1 minus x here. And that is equal to, um, 0 0.0803. Okay? So, in short, we need to only have 8.0342% ng ating reject just to, uh, make B as profitable as machine A. Okay? So, I hope na nag-guess nyo yung ating solution for this, no? And, uh, ganun lang naman siya. Depende nga, kasi yun lagi sa tanong yung ating mga ginagawa dito. So, kung mas profitable yung A, so therefore, um, equate natin ngayon yung profit ng A dun sa B para makompute natin kung ano ba yung kailangan nating rejects para makukuha din natin yung ganun profit. Now, of course, itong tanong na to, yung B, hindi yung tatanong kung ano, kung mas profitable yung B. Siyempre, babaliktad yung ating machines dyan. Ah, uh, yun lang. So, that's it for letter for number 8. So, let's proceed to the next um, item. Okay, so for number 9, we have... Oh, meron na tayong pumps dito. Alam ko, nagmamomentum na kayo. Kaya, um, familiar na kayo sa mga pumps-pumps natin. <laughs> Gago! So, meron tayong 2 pumps capable of delivering 100 horsepower to an agricultural agricultural application are being evaluated in a present economy study. So, by the way, ang ating pinag-usapan is present economy study. No? Usually, this is just uh, a comparison between two alternatives. Ganun lang siya kasimple. Pero sometimes, tatlo, kagaya ng mga R insulation, diba? Madami yun. So, uh, the selected pump will only be utilized for one year. So, tatandaan nyo yun, isang taon lang natin siya gagamitin. So, most probably, yung ating um, time frame dito would be one year. And it will have no market value at the end of the year. So, ito, um, sadly, yung ating pump, hindi mo na siya pwedeng ipagbenta kasi zero na yung kanyang salvage value. So, ipapabasura na lang natin after ng one year. The pertinent data are summarized as follows. So, ito talaga yung importante dito. Na yung parameters natin, meron tayong tatlo, purchase price, maintenance cost, and efficiency. So, syempre, yung maintenance cost, kailangan kailangan yan. Now, for the A pump, we have... Uh, 145,000 for purchasing price and then pump natin for B is 310,000. Mas mahal itong B, no? Then maintenance cost 85, 25, 5 for pump B and then yung efficiency ng A pump is 80% and then 90% for B pump. Now, if an electric asam ah, yun? If an electric <laughs> power costs 5 pesos per kilowatt hour and the pump will be operated 4,000 hours per year, which pump should be chosen? So, napakadali ng question. Pump A or Pump B? Okay, so, um, ano kaya sa tingin nyo yung gagamitin natin ito na reference? Is it profit or is it the cost? Okay, so if your answer is profit, so mali kayo, uh, will be the cost. Kasi walang time profit dito, wala tayong binibenta dito eh. So, we'll just have to consider each cost for each pump. For the, the cost for each pump. 
Okay, so for cost, diba total cost lagi natin Baliktad na naman ako ng letter So total cost natin lagi is fixed cost plus variable cost Okay Now, um, for the fixed cost, usually ito naman purchasing price natin, no? And then, siya, sometimes, itong maintenance cost, para nagiging fixed cost na rin sila kasi yearly siya ginagawa, eh. Okay. So, uh, with this, um, we can, um, itong, uh, ito palang first sentence dito, wala na silang kinalaman dito, ha? kasi, ano siya, eh, parang, ano lang yan, parang description lang siya ng mga pumps natin. So, anyway, so, fixed cost, for A, so we have A, Uh, 45, uh, 145,000 purchasing price. So, yun yung kung makano mo siya binili. And then, maintenance cost. And, um, hopefully, itong maintenance cost na to is not done. Mm -hmm. Wait. Let me just check ha. Kasi, wala nakalagay ito kung kailan mo siya minimaintain eh. Okay. So, let's just assume na itong maintenance cost will cover na yung buong taon. Kasi, wala siyang sinabi eh. Pero if ever meron siya, let's say, um, two months mo siya ginagawa. For every two months, the maintenance cost, then should be per two months here. And then you you have to convert this months into years. So, pero kang baling, um, anim, anim na maintenance uh, dito, then you multiply it by six. Pero since wala naman nakalagay dito, so let's just add it. Kasi wala nakalagay eh. Wala mo mag, ano tayo, mag-assume tayo ng ganun. So, yun nga, sinasabi ko kanina is, importante yung mga ganun dito sa econ, yung mga per year, per month. Kasi, if ever na wala siyang sinabi, mahirap pag-assume talaga dito sa, ano, talo pera, yung pinag-uusapan natin dito eh. Anyway, so, let's proceed with this. So, variable cost na tayo, which is yung electric power cost. So, meron tayo sabi dito na 5 pesos per kilowatt hour. Pero, gano'n ba katagal siya? So, so, dito lang tayo magkakonsider sa 100 HP na binigay sa atin. Kasi, yun lang yung binigay sa atin eh, for both of them. So, If we have 4,000 hours per year and um, let's say 4,000 hours per year. No? And then sabi dito, you can actually pay 5 pesos per kilowatt hour. So in short, kilowatt hour. So meron niyang um, naka per kilowatt and then per hour. So we can cancel out R here. Pero kasi kailangan natin cancelin yung kilowatts. So uh, the only way that we can deal with that is to convert this um, kilowatt in terms of HP na gives natin which is 100 HP yung ating dinideliver ng pump so ang gagawin natin ngayon mamultiply natin siya sa 100 HP converted to kilowatts so uh, di ba alam naman natin na 1 HP is 746 watts so kung ito'y kilowatt this is equal to 0.746 kilowatts okay so in short uh, if you have let's say um 100 HP this is equal to so meron tayo ditong 100 wait, burahin ko to so mumultiply natin to ngayon sa 100 HP times yung ating um, 1 HP ay 0.746 kilowatts so this cancels out as well as this one okay? so now we can now proceed with finding the total cost for A So, yun, 145,000 plus 8,500 plus 4,000 times 5 pesos kil per kilowatt are converted. So, this becomes equal to 164, 1,645,500. Okay, so that is CTA. Now, for CTB, same concept lang din. So, what we have here is 310,000. Plus 25,500 Oh, and by the way, I forgot this efficiency So, syempre yung ating power Because um, hindi nga siya efficient um, Hindi siya naging efficient ngayon So, kung halimbawa, nagde-deliver tayo ng 100 HP And hindi siya capable na mag-convert into 100% efficiency Then therefore, um, mas kakailangan pa na mas mataas na uh, power rating So, with this, uh, we need to divide this all by Sorry We need to divide this power requirement or power delivered with the efficiency na kaya niya. So, that will be 0.8 para magbigay ka na mas mataas sa power output. So, in short, mababago nga pala itong ating um, total cost. So, divide ko lang siya muna. So, in short, this becomes um, medyo malaki yung naging change. No? Kaya, um, careful kayo sa mga ganong cases wherein may efficiency na binibigay. 
factor din yan para may consider. Okay, so anyway, so we have 25,500, balik tayo dito sa B. And then same concept lang, so plus uh, 4,000 R, 5, 100. So ang magiging um, conversion natin is 100 over 0.90 naman siya. So we have 4,000, hindi ko nasusulat yung units ah. 4,000, 5, 100 divided by 0.9. And then, 0 0.746. Okay, so our cost for B um, would be equal to... Kasi lang, delete delete lang ako sa calculus. So, sana wala akong mano dito. Madoble na ano, unit, na ano pala, na values. So, 4,000 times 5 times 100 times 0 0.746 divided by 0.9. Okay. So this is one nine nine three two seven seven point seven seven eight. Okay. So kung wala um the answer here should be uh, the pump that should be chosen should be pump B. Okay. And kung wala pansin yun, di ba? Pag ininspect yun lang siya, ay grabe ang mahal ng B. Purchasing price mahal, maintenance cost mahal. Puta brad ganon ka kayaman. Pero the, at the end of the day, kung ko consider natin yung variable cost. With the efficiency naman, mas tubo ka pa rin dun sa pump B. So, yun. Kaya, uh, this engineering economy is very important for us to analyze things na beyond our capability just by inspection. Kasi kung tutusin, inspection lang ginagawa natin dito. Parang letter B agad pipiliin natin eh. But then again, we have to look through the... Um, through other factors now we need to consider especially when we're dealing with equipment or those that are changing especially yung mga variable costs natin and i think we're down with the last item here so let's proceed it so now let's proceed it so now let's proceed to the last item so ayun na nga guys last item na tayo maka survive din tayo sana hindi kayo nakakatulog sa akin na padali anyway so um Actually, pag inaanto kayo, tapos nanonood kayo yung lecture, matulog mo na kayo bago kayo ulit manood lecture. Kasi sayang. Kasi kasi hindi yun naiintindihan pag inaantok na eh. Ano, ano, ano? Ano ang senyo na tamimi kayo? Ano? Basahin ko muna ulit. Ito kasi hindi kayo marunong magbasa. So, an, an, in an engine valve, a lash adjuster keeps pressure constant, thereby increasing fuel efficiency in automobile engines. So, ano tayo? Kotsehan na tayo ngayon. The relationship between price and monthly demand for lash adjusters made by certain company is given by this equation. So, susulat ko yung equation dito kasi alam ko importante ito eh. Kaya pagayin isulat kung hindi dito importante. <laughs> Divided by 0.10. Okay. So, what is the demand? Uh, bakit ito yung may, may asterisk? When the total revenue... Ah, okay. Gets ko na. Kasi dito... Um, ang representation natin na maximum demand would be the asterisk. Okay, so gamitin natin siya later. Yung the asterisk as the maximized demand. What is the demand when the total revenue is maximized? And then what important data are needed if maximum profit is desired? Okay. So meron tayong two questions again. And unahin natin is paghahanap ng de demand na may asterisk which is which will be coming from the total revenue maximize total revenue no? okay so um, the total revenue again diba this is equal to PD which is yung ating price and multiplied by the demand so ngayon since uh, we're just given by monthly demand gamitin na lang natin yung ating monthly demand so ating Ima maximize kayo is total revenue, monthly total revenue. So, our TR using this PD would be uh, something like actually, ano na pala siya eh, between price and monthly demand na pala siya. So, uh, with this, uh, kumil na natin siya. Eh. So, we have P, yung ating price nung ano natin, nung automobile engine, and then we multiply this by the demand. So, that is 2000 minus P divided by 0 0.10. Okay. Pero sabi dito kasi, um, ano ba yung total rev? Kailangan natin i-maximize is yung demand. So that we'll be able to get the uh, maximum total revenue, di ba? Hindi naman kasi yung ating ma-maximize is yung ating uh, price. Pero knowing na ito naman is uh, an equation, we can just find the maximum or the price 
probably optimal price para makuha natin yung corresponding critical value niya which would be the demand. Pero um, I think it is always best to use the demand itself dito. So, ang gagawin ko na lang is I'll be redefining the equation and then I'll be using yung ating um, demand itself. Uh, will you please repeat it? Redefining the equation and then I'll be using yung ating um, demand itself. Okay? So, with this, um, from this equation, yung ating 2000 minus P all over 0 0.10 is equal to D. Gagawin ko ngayon siyang P is equal to, um, I think that will be 2000 minus 0 0.10 D. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong dito. As if naman, naman correct niya pa ako dito. Na. So, di ba, multiply dito sa 0 0.10. Then, lipat doon, transpose this out would be minus 0.10 and then positive P. So, ito na yung ating P. Okay? So, yun lang yun. So, the, this is equal to 2000 minus 0 0.10 D. Of course, imamultiply mo ito ngayon sa D ulit. Ayan. So, magiging na. So, makapansin nyo, magkakaroon tayo dito ng D squared. Meaning, may parabolic, ano tayo? May parabolic curve tayo na mapoproduce. So, anyway, uh, let's just integrate it. So, I uh, differentiate. Sorry. <laughs> so, we have the derivative of the revenue with respect to the demand. So, this is, ito yung differentiate ko. Ha. This is equal to, um, ano bang gusto nyo? Chain rule? Ano, ano gusto nyo? Product rule tayo mag-differentiate or um, distributed. So, product rule na lang. So, we have 2000 minus 0 0.10d times 1 plus d times negative 0 0.10 okay which is equal to 0 so makakuha, makakuha tayo ngayon ng critical value ng demand natin so sabi ko nga gagawin natin yung nasa given na may asterisk so you can just use your shift solve para ma-compute yung inyong demand okay so hopefully ay makuha natin ang tama okay so the demand should be 10,000 so this is your um total revenue, I mean, this is your demand wherein the total revenue is maximized. Pero, sabi ko nga, um, total revenue is maximized, no? Hindi profit. So, hindi ka rin talaga sure kung itong demand na to would really give you the maximum profit. Kasi, uh, demand yan eh, hindi yan profit. Pero yun yung nasa problem natin. And what important data are needed if maximum profit is desired? Yun na nga yung sinasabi ko eh. Ano ba yung kailangan mong data? So, for this one, yung total revenue, yung ating answer dito would be 10,000. So, box natin yan. And then, um, sa sunod na question, what important data are needed if maximum profit is desired? So, di ba yung ating profit, this is equal to the total revenue minus total cost. So, wala tayong problem sa total revenue kasi pwede natin siya makompute from PD. But how about the total cost? So, kailangan nating i-add dito sa data natin is yung selling price. Selling price. Okay. So, kung halimbawa, um, nagbebenta ka ngayon ng, ano mo, ng engine, di ba? Ay, joke. Ano ba to? Engine valve. Sorry. <laughs> kung nagbebenta ka ng engine valve, so, yung selling price ng iyong engine valve, kailangan mo yon And then, uh, kailangan mo rin ng mga variable costs mo sa um, iyong engine valve as well as yung fixed cost mo. Or kung halimbawa, uh, nagde-deliver ka, kailangan mo rin mga shipping, fee, ganyan. Pero pwede mo siya laga, ilagay lahat sa variable costs. So, ito yung mga need natin na um, i-consider para ma-compute natin yung ating maximum profit. And by stating these values, then we can uh, find the equation for the profit and then differentiate it, equate it to zero to be able to get the um, certain amount of demand that must maximize the profit itself. Kasi hindi enough na revenue lang i-maximize natin. So, ayun na nga guys. Tapos na yung ating discussion sa ating um, present economy study. So, hopefully binasa nyo siya. So, tapos na yung ating 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 pages sa ating discussion. And um, supposedly kasi um, two weeks na lang and then magpe-prelim na tayo. So, dapat ganun. Kasi medyo napaga yung tapos natin sa discussion. Pero, yun nga, uh, from from here on out, we'll be discussing this money time relationship and equivalence as well as yung mga cash flow diagram natin which will incorporate a more detailed discussion especially yung problem solving uh, natin problem solving side natin which will include yung ating cash flows na para siyang material balance sabi ko nga before pero in 
sa ano sa una nating discussions, I want you to focus on um, comparing alternatives, finding the equation for the profit, and yung mga pwede natin pa consider na other variables like fixed cost, variable cost, and how do we evaluate these uh, different alternatives when we try to uh, choose the best uh, option for any kind of um, any kind of product or any kind of scenario that we'll be encountering in this um, engineering economics. Okay? So, yun na lang muna sa ngayon and then I'm hoping na you stay tuned sa ating mga next um, video tutorial na nakakantok. Okay? <laughs>